Good morning, everybody. Hope you had a great weekend. This uh, is another FaceTime with the Content Guy with Michael Sansolo. Mm -hmm. And we decided to uh, to to um, get back together uh, for this because last week, you may recall, uh, we had a, did a conversation about who would be on Retailing's Mount Rushmore. And the two we came up with were Sam Walton and Jeff Bezos. And there were some caveats in there. We mentioned some mm -hmm. other names. Uh, we got a torrent of email. It was great. We got a lot of email um, responding to that. So we thought we'd kind of entertain some of those other names and talk, to, talk about them a little bit. And Michael, I thought one of the interesting thing was we got a lot of email, but there were relative, there were fewer than a dozen other names mentioned. So there was a, even though we got a lot of people weighing in, there was a, the universe of names was relatively small, which I thought was interesting. And in a lot of the cases, and, and obviously Kevin and I have talked about this, a lot of people went beyond the recent bias we might have, because obviously both Sam Walton and Jeff Bezos are fairly recent. Bezos is last week. And people went back to the genesis of retail and came up with some really interesting names. So why don't you share them, Kevin? Well, the name we probably got more than any other was Fred Meyer, M-E-Y-E-R, uh, in the Pacific Northwest, who basically pioneered um, the, the Super Center, long mm -hmm. before uh, Sam Walton ever did, or, and actually it wasn't Sam Walton, it was David Glass who really pushed the, the, the Super Center at, at Walmart. And then a few people mentioned the other Fred Meyer, uh, M-E-I-J-E-R. So that was interesting. But it was Fred Meyer in the Pacific Northwest. We probably got more email about than anybody else. Well, that may also be a sign that we have a lot of readers in the Northwest. That's I know true. that'll I, delight you. I can't imagine why. Um, Jim Senegal. We got a number of people who suggested Jim Senegal at Costco, which was interesting. You brought up Saul Price. Right. But people so, sort of saw Jim Senegal as being the person who really, who really drove the format and made it more of a national phenomenon. And honestly, Kevin, that's one of the discussions. And, and again, this is a completely ludicrous and hypothetical discussion. But there are people who invented formats and there are people who they may not have perfected it, but right. certainly improved on it. And I would think Saul Price was the creator of the of the club. Jim Senegal took it to a whole new level. And it's why Jim Senegal ended up buying out Saul Price's company. Well, and in, and in all fairness, when you when you think about this stuff, it's sort of hard to draw the line. I mean, Walmart didn't invent the super center, right? No. And quite frankly, Jeff Bezos didn't invent internet shopping. No. So sometimes it is, the, it is the, the person who sort of sees something that exists and then sort of grows it and expands on it and makes it more meaningful, makes it more relevant to customers. And, 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 and that has, in some, in some ways, that's more important to how people live their lives than the person who just had the idea. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. One of the other names we kicked around in the previous discussion was Ray Kroc of McDonald's. He did not create McDonald's. It was the McDonald brothers. But Ray Kroc saw it and, and look what he did with it. Now billions and billions have been served. The McDonald brothers didn't see that. Ray Kroc did. You mentioned Howard Schultz. Certainly, a lot, you can buy coffee in a lot of spots before Starbucks, and you can certainly buy it in a lot of places now. He saw a different way of presenting it. And he didn't even invent Starbucks. No. <laughs> Much less coffee. Right. right. <laughs> Had he done um, that, we'd really put him on the mountain. <laughs> it's, and it's, you know, by the way, on the subject of Ray Kroc and McDonald's, people who have not seen the movie called The Founder with Michael Keaton as Ray Kroc, I think it's a terrific movie. Mm -hmm. so, well, we can, you and I could do another 15 minutes. Whole another whole other video. There were a lot of people who brought up uh, Sears and Roebuck, J.C. Penny, Marshall Fields, and then in a subsequent discussion with you and I had, uh, you mentioned um, uh, George, uh, Frank Woolworth. And, right. and it was like, and I guess my question would be, I mean, those are obviously names that, that um, everybody knows because they were so early, but in all of those cases, I mean, they have not, they have not stood the test of time. Um, they have, they did take their, they did not evolve with the customer. Now, a Amazon, Jeff Bezos, we still don't know because it's still a, a relatively young business. But I think we could say that Walmart has evolved with the times and in fact has done a better job of evolving in the last five to 10 years and even before that, I think. Well, and they great. seem to be constantly in motion. Like Frank Woolworth, and I, I honestly, I had to look it up because I had the thought about him. 
he created this sort of self-service five and dime back in the 1890s. And that company was still relatively important up until the 1960s. If you think back on the civil rights movement, there were a lot of the sit-ins at lunch counters who were at Woolworth because they were so prevalent throughout the United States. So they had a good long run. You couldn't find one right now. I, I mean, I, I don't recall the last time I saw Woolworth out there. It is possible that 10 years from now, 20 years from now, we'll say Amazon, who was that? I may hate myself for asking this. Have you? Are you old enough to have ever sat at a Woolworth's lunch counter? Because I have. Uh, I actually, I do remember doing it. I think, I think my Aunt May took me to one when I was like a kid. <laughs> you know, the sad thing is we're old enough to remember a lot of things we wish we didn't. A um, couple of people brought up uh, the Hartford Brothers. Yes. And again, but boy, what a classic case of a company that was not able to evolve with the times and was, you know, through various ownerships and... and, and mm -hmm. it, well, even to the point, there are probably people watching this who are wondering who are the Hartford brothers. And they created what was known as the Great Atlantic and Pacific Tea Company, which became A&P. And quite honestly, at their peak, A&P was substantially larger and more important than Amazon or Walmart today. The federal government even passed laws specifically aimed at A&P because they were so dominant. And they have been gone. How many years have been? It's got to be 20 years since there was an A&P. It, it just completely not it that long because I felt like I feel like I was writing about their demise yesterday, but you're probably right. It's about, yeah. <laughs> well, Christian that, Haub is somewhere. Yeah. So, well, I think Christian Haub is living in Westchester County or Greenwich Could County, he, he's running, a, running a hedge fund or something like that. <laughs> um, um, one interesting name that came up, um, and I didn't know who this person was, you recognize the name, uh, George Laurer or L A U R E R. Why didn't I don't you know? know how to pronounce it. Um, he was the man who is believed to have created the universal product code. And again, we think of the UPC, it's, it's so ubiquitous these days. It actually came into existence in the mid 1970s. Prior to that, there was no scanning, there were no barcodes. And think of how it has changed every part of commerce virtually. I mean, when we used to go on trips, your bags would be scanned in. When we used to be able to go to the blood bank, they'd scan a barcode for you. He's the guy, he's, he's the godfather of that. The other name I threw out at you was Sil Goldman, the man who created the shopping cart. And think of how that changed the trip because prior to that, I assume you you carried all your stuff in whatever you can, I don't know, a laundry basket, who knows? You probably brought your own bags to the store, <laughs> which is sort of what we're back to doing today and carrying <laughs> things like that. You know, it is interesting though, because I think that, you know, and, and, and you sort of touched on this, um, is that if we could ask Jeff Bezos to have this conversation with us, right? We, we should be so lucky. He always calls the two of us. Oh, always, you know, just to check in. And, um, but I suspect that he would, well, I, you know, he, I'm sure he would say, yeah, Sam Walton belongs up there. I suspect he'd say, if you want to put me up there, that's fine. Or he might say, yeah, you know, I belong up there. But I suspect the thing that Jeff Bezos would say is, one or two of those spots don't even put a face up there because the person who should occupy that, you don't know who they are and you have no idea yet what they're going to invent. And they may, and in fact, they may not even be alive. That um, that, that is the nature of, of this beast is that there's always going to be that next innovation that is going to be the next, the next great innovation that is going to supplant everybody. Mm -hmm. I, you know, and Kevin, you and I have, have discussed this on Morning News Beat before. The greatest saying possibly in the history of mankind is sic gloria transit mundi. All the glory of the world is fading. And, and if you've ever seen, I know you have the movie Patton about General George Patton. And he reminds everyone in that movie that when Roman generals back at the peak of the Roman Empire and they would conquer the known world, they would have somebody standing behind them to remind them all glory is fading. What Jeff Bezos, and again, he's not calling the two of us, but I, I think that's absolutely right. There may be some third grader out there right now who, as this child grows up, is going to have an idea on retail that will completely disrupt the way business is done today. And not to be, not to be an Amazon fanboy, of which I'm often accused, <laughs> but I do think that there is a, the, the, one of the things that 
is more likely to keep them relevant long term is the whole notion that the whole today is day one um, philosophy because it, 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 it is by its very nature designed to avoid complacency, right? And to keep, and to keep people trying to innovate going forward. Um, you know, there's probably dozens of things that are being worked on in Seattle or where, you know, or Virginia or wherever they happen to be that we don't even, we have no idea about and that mm-hmm. have the potential to change our lives. And I've always thought that that was, to me, that was really the magic of Amazon's approach as opposed to just Amazon which is the, no tr- n- the notion that they come at the business by thinking, how are we going to change the customer's life today? Right. And I think that, and I think in this marketplace, that's, I mean, you can't do it every day. You can't, you know, you may not even be able to do it every month, but if you approach how you innovate and how you kind of think about the customer and how you and your business in terms of how are we going to, not how are we going to sell them more peas, not how we're going to sell them, you know, 50 cents more. Pr- how, how can we get our, a, a little bit higher transaction and a few more customers to make and, and a little bit more margin? I mean, that's fine. That's important. But to change people's lives is enormously powerful. And I think in today's market, that's sort of how you have to think. And you have to constantly be moving forward. Again, you and I both love quotes. And Satchel Page, the great baseball pitcher, always used to say, don't look behind you. Somebody may be gaining on you. Yeah. And that's how you almost have to approach, approach business. And it goes to this point on Bezos. As long as you're constantly pushing for what you cannot be self-satisfied, complacency and apathy are the two greatest enemies out there. So whether it's in Cincinnati or whether it's in Bentonville or it's in Seattle, I believe those companies, whether it's Kroger, Walmart, or Amazon, obviously, are every day saying, what are we going to be better at tomorrow than we were yesterday? And those three companies, let's be honest, have all been doing a lot of innovation over the last few years, recognizing this. So everybody else listening to this, whatever kind of company you're in, whether it's one store or a thousand stores, what are you going to do about tomorrow? That's where the answer is. So basically, we've got Walton, Bezos, and two TBDs. Right. <laughs> right. Okay. Well, listen. As we record this, it is Saturday. Uh, it is Saturday afternoon. It is about a little before four o'clock. You can technically tell- it's I, Sunday. I said Saturday. I meant Sunday. Sunday, and you can tell it's Sunday because if you look out my window, there's a blizzard going on outside. <laughs> But that means the Super Bowl hasn't happened yet. So what the hell, Michael? We don't know what's going to happen. Who, who do you think is going to win the Super Bowl? I'm taking the Chiefs. I, I just I think they've got the the weapons to win any game. Okay, and, and I'll and I'll take I'll, I'm I'm taking the Bucks not because I want the Bucks to win, but because in my life, anytime I've I have not taken time Tom Brady, I've lost. <laughs> <laughs> and I just you know I mean you know, I, I've learned my lesson. I'm just you know in, in my football pool, I've got I've got the Bucks because I'm not betting against Brady. So we'll see how this turns out. Anyway, uh, listen. We'll, we'll do this again. This, this, uh, it may be TBD up on my Mount Rushmore, but hopefully this conversation is to be continued.